Welcome to Celebrating Act Two, where John Coleman and I get to speak with Dr. Liz Lister and um, always find out things that help us live longer, healthier lives. Hey, Dr. Liz, great to see you again. Likewise, thank you. Um, you know, Art mentions uh, the fact that you have always have great advice for helping us live longer, healthier lives. And of course, Art and I and a lot of our viewers are getting to that age where we know that falling down can be a major problem. You know, you break something. And in my family, uh, it seems to me, and this is not scientific uh, analysis or anything, but I just recall the hip it was the big problem. If you have somebody, a grand aunt or somebody broke down, broke, fell down, broke an arm, not a big yeah. problem, you know, and not certainly not good, but a hip seemed to be a death notice. Is that true? And why? Why the hip? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. You're absolutely right. It's definitely worse than other fractures around the body. Uh, the risk of mortality of actually dying after a hip fracture is pretty significant. Uh, it's better if the person gets surgery repaired, if they're able, if they're a good candidate for the surgery and they're able to get it repaired, the one-year mortality, mor mortality, morbidity is being sick, mortality is actually dying, it still can be as much as 20%, one wow. in five chance of not making it past another year. Wow. Uh, now that mortality rate can really go up high. It can actually go up to 60, even some places say 70%. Mortality within the year of the hip fracture if it's not repaired. And usually, if there's other what we call comorbidity, other illnesses that accompany that, so it's pretty significant. Uh, okay. So it's not just me, not just my anecdotal memory no. of my grand aunt. It's Correct. really it's a real problem. Yeah. Well, yeah, of course, so they know it, it, it's real. What yeah, do people I, die? Course. What do people die of? I mean. Uh, it's not like the hip uh, uh, goes into your brain and, and, and puts a, a bone through the brain. Uh, one of the things that happen because of that fracture, is it uh, embolisms or is it uh, lack of mobility? What are the, what are the things that actually cause the, uh, the, the patients uh, to not survive? Yeah, so the early mortality within the three months of the fracture within three months of surgery, that's from three things. It can be from infection. It's not an easy surgery to do. There can be infection. There can also be, you just mentioned blood clots. That's exactly right. Especially with older regimens where uh, we have a friend of our family. I'm not sure if she was in her, I think she was in her 80s when she had the hip surgery. This was a long time ago. It was about 30 years ago. And at that time, the care was to have people rest in bed after a hip surgery. And you are probably aware, and our listeners probably are too, that nowadays they get you up out of bed the same day of the surgery. Yeah. Right. So, okay. blood clots, so infection, blood clots. And interestingly, is GI bleeding, gastrointestinal bleeding. So, I had to look a little further about that one. Like, why would these folks have more bleeding? The answer seems to be stress ulcers ah. that bleed, yes, and that this contributes to mortality. That's the early mortality within the first three months or so uh, after hip surgery for repairing a fracture. Yeah. Then there's the longer term, long term. So there's what we call all cause mortality is increased over the next 12 years. That's mm. also been shown after a hip fracture. So yeah. it's doubled over the past 12, over the preceding 12 years. Uh, and that is often related to the comorbidities. So if the person has heart disease, if they have respiratory True. illness, mental being less mobile. So when you're less mobile, that does a couple of things. First of all, you lose muscle mass. Uh, mm -hmm. We know that frailty yeah. Frailty is a huge, huge risk for dying, yeah. right? Yeah. So you lose muscle mass when you're less active. And also your breathing is more constricted. If you're lying in bed or if you're not moving as much, mm. not taking deep breaths, that is going to increase your risk of a respiratory illness. And that contributes to it. And then the other major area is a kidney failure, heart failure, 
uh, other yeah. type of organ failure. Mm -hmm. So there really is it's just is as devastating as the impression that you were getting, John. Yeah. Not your so what are, so what are the, but the takeaways though? If you don't want, if you want to reduce your risk, you can't eliminate it totally. Obviously, even healthy people in their twenties and thirties break hips from time to time, uh, uh, not very often. What are the kind of things that we can do to reduce our risk of having uh, uh, bones that that are, uh, I assume, uh, are subject to more stress when you have a fall, and therefore, how do you reduce your risk of a fracture other than becoming a weevil who wobble, but they don't fall down. People yeah. do fall. <laughs> of course, other if, than if, you that, if you're not a weevil, what, what can you do to reduce that risk? Yes. Okay. Everything that helps with fall prevention is where the benefits will be. Keeping moving, not knocking it out of Jim, we've the three of us have talked about this so often that baseline activity is more important in the grand scheme than actual quote unquote exercise types of workouts. So keeping moving, especially in ways that build your core strength and not only strength, but stability. Stability is so, so important. So strength and stability and coordination. And then doing everything we can for our environment, all right? I, I, my heart just goes out to people who, you know, their fur babies, their pets are so important to them. But I, I just wince every time I have a patient who have a fall caused by a dog getting underfoot or something like that. So yeah. We have to do everything we can to manage our environment for uh, preventing falls in yeah. every way possible. The shoes we wear, the carpeting in the house, uh, handrails, everything. Everything we do, I recommend doing all of it. Anything that you can do to prevent falling down, strengthening your body, avoiding a fall, that's really, that's going to be key. Yeah. Wow. Um, well, thanks for, I guess, validating my unscientific uh observations about uh, old people falling down and breaking their hips. But uh, of course, at a, at you get to be a senior citizen, you really don't want to fall down at all because nothing good mm. comes of it. You know, when you're younger, you can bounce back, but it's much harder to do that when you're over 60. That's Dr. Right. Liz, thank you so much. This has been enlightening. And it made me feel like I knew what I was talking about. For more on Celebrating Act Two, visit our webpage, follow us on Facebook, subscribe to us on YouTube, and tell your friends. Celebrating Act Two is the user manual for the second half of your life.